Ashok Lodha has been in investment banking for two decades and is currently Director, Investment Banking Division at Barclays. Prior to joining Barclays, he worked at Goldman Sachs and Deutsche Bank in various leadership roles. Ashok leads He for She Initiative for APAC and is, and is a senior advisor to Women's Initiatives Network in India and APAC. He's passionate towards working on various social and cultural causes. Ashok holds a management degree from Newport University, California, and a graduate degree in accounting and finance from University of Jodhpur. Welcome, Ashok. Thanks, Owen. Thanks for having me here. So it's great to you know talk about. I'm very excited to talk about the topic that we have, uh, which is on gender diversity. How do we bridge that gap? So based on my conversations with you, it's very evident, Ashok, that you're very passionate about this, about gender diversity and women empowerment. So maybe tell us, start by telling us a little more of that journey. How did, how did you, how did that happen? Sure, um, Suman, uh, as you said, this is really a passion to me. And the passion is not because um, I'm a father to a lovely daughter, but it started um, when I was working at Goldman. And um, uh, when we were setting up the organization in uh, India, one of the things that we wanted to do was to uh, make sure that well, we look at diversity uh, as something um, which is uh, a key building block. And that's how I got involved into it. That's, that's when I first you know, thought about it, and, well, you know, how important, how critical it is uh, if we have to evolve um, uh, you know, as an organization and as a, as a community. So since then, I've been very um, involved into this and over a period of time, it has become passion. Now, um, uh, it is not just about doing it within the organization, but wherever I see an opportunity to really make a difference, wherever I see an opportunity to really um, help somebody uh, guide, mentor, coach, I would definitely seize that opportunity and, and help somebody. Who is uh, who is looking for it um, within the organization, outside the organization? Because I see this as 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 a way to really help build the community at large, rather than just helping the organizations or uh, meeting those numbers, um, uh, you know, to check the box. That's why I say that well, it's more than passion to me. Excellent. So let's start by talking a bit about the challenges, you know, with your experience, and you've seen how this is playing out not just here but also globally. Uh, this is, uh, you know, the women empowerment thing. If you look at it, you know, there is, there is diversity. Companies are looking at metrics. There are more women coming in. But at the same time, you know, whether there is real inclusion in the workplace, uh, whether there's a sense of belonging, whether there's better integration, not just as women separately, but as, as men and women, which is what is going to really make it uh, the model successful. Uh, would like to get your views. Where do you think we are? Uh, if, and if I'm looking at the Indian context, where do you think we are in that journey? Um, yes, there are challenges. There are many challenges. Um, uh, if I look at how we hire um, our employees, the challenge really starts. In fact, we can take a step back. The challenge actually starts with the whole uh, gender ratio. So in India, the gender ratio is 52 to 48, 52 percent men and 48 percent women. So that's essentially the premise of the whole uh, problem. And then uh, when you go to uh, schools, colleges, institutes, that's where, um, again, we have um, uh, the, the imbalance. So that imbalance continues and carries into our hiring, into our uh, promotions, into, you know, into, into getting people to the board level. Right? So the challenges essentially uh, are many but we are still trying to do our best to really uh, fix those at the very root cause, uh, which is uh, when, we, when we hire people, we always um, ensure that, well, we are looking at um, diversity. Of course, it does not mean that, well, um, meritocracy is not the, uh, uh, the, the basis of hiring, but we still try to make sure that, well, we give equal opportunity uh, to women. It's very easy to really um, get all those uh, resumes of men because most of them are gonna be those. But we specifically instruct our um, recruiters, the agencies as well. We definitely want to see um, a diverse set of profiles. Um, we also experimented some time back where um, we gave resumes 
to uh, to the recruiters without any name. So that was to see that well, if there is any unconscious bias uh, or even conscious bias behind uh, the whole interviewing and selection process, which um, essentially in our organization, there was nothing like that. Uh, and we experimented with it actually. But I'm just saying that well, the challenges actually are many fold. But um, as corporates, uh, we are putting in every effort to make sure that in every possible way, we try to put in um, the best effort to address and bridge those gaps. Okay. So there is a lot of interest now in uh, women, uh, you know, in developing women, whether it's in, in the DNI space. Uh, we from Inroads, we do a fair amount of work with women leaders in women leadership programs. But often I see a lot of these programs is about getting women in a room and other women addressing them. Uh, whereas I believe that to really make it successful, it needs to be inclusive. So I'm sure that men also have a big role to play in bridging the gap. Uh, so it'd be good to hear from you. What is the role you think men can play, um, you know, looking ahead in terms of hiring or even, you know, on a day to day basis at the workplace? Great question. And this is essentially what all my passion is about, where I want um, more and more men to really come forward and, and um, make this everybody's agenda. So women empowerment or bridging the gender diversity gap is not just women's agenda. So um, WIN or Women's Initiative Network, which is uh, our gender diversity network. Uh, when I took the role, to, the role of a chair, um, initially people thought that, well, what a men is doing uh, in a women initiative network. But then I, you know, I redefined the whole uh, definition of it. Well, look, it's not about by women, for women kind of network where they're just trying to uh, network with themselves or network amongst themselves uh, or, you know, roll out certain sessions to really uh, learn from amongst themselves. But it should be an initiative where um, as an organization, men and women together, we are looking at how we can really work together to bridge this gap. So um, the initiative called He for She, which was um, initiated by uh, UN Women, Barclays is one of the founding uh, member of this, of this initiative. And I play a role of, of um, the ambassador for our uh, Asia Pac organization, where we do, you know, where we put in a lot of effort to make sure that uh, not only we spread awareness about the role of men in bridging the gap, but we also uh, make sure that a lot of men are involved, whether it is by way of mentoring, by way of hiring, by way of uh, supporting, by way of policy making, you know, to do their bit to take this this uh, agent of course. So that's where I believe that well, men have a very important role to play, starting from the um, from the responsibilities at home to really being the role model um, in the corporate, to really ensuring that the next generation see uh, them as the as the one who led the, the the whole change process. That's why I I believe that the role of men is very important if we are to really take this as a as per um, and analysis, um, if things keep going the way they have been going, it's gonna take us 257 years to really bridge this, uh, this, this gap. Well, do we need to wait? Do we want to wait? I think the time is now. And unless we all, men and women together, put in our combined effort, this is not, so, um, uh, we will be, will be seeing uh, the success very soon. And this is what I really want to see in my lifetime. Well said. 257 years, that's a long time. I mean, obviously we don't have that much of time. It needs to be in, uh, you know, in a much, much shorter time frame. So any tips on, uh, on for men at different roles? Let's say if you're a, a leader, uh, maybe you can also do mentoring to some of the women or if you, if you have other women as peers. So any, would you like to share any tips that men can uh, take up, which they can implement right away? Most important to one is to really um, do away with our unconscious biases. I'll give you, you know, typical examples uh, where, um, you know, I have heard about these and I've tried to address it. Um, uh, a lot of male managers thinking that, well, in a particular role, I don't want to hire a woman because this involves staying back until late, 
This involves working in a night shift. Um, moreover, I believe that, well, if I hire a woman in this role, very soon she's going to ask for a maternity leave. Very soon she's going to get married. So I have to spend time in training, retraining, cross-training, which is a lot of work. Well, I think most of these are just biases because, um, well, some women may have to do it. They may have reasons to do it. But, well, it does not mean that every woman is going to really, uh, you know, go, is, is going to get married outside of, um, you know, the city where she's working. So we should really, first of all, do away with these biases. That's, that's the most you know, common thing. And I think this is what needs to be, to be really addressed at the root cause. Then there are a lot of other things that men can do. Um, the fact is that, well, 95% of the corporate CEOs um, are men. So they definitely have, definitely have to play a bigger role in ensuring that, well, they are mentoring, supporting, um, uh, and sponsoring women in, in, in senior roles. They have to make sure that, well, they are creating diverse organizations. They will have to make sure that, well, they are really bringing in a culture of equality and they are, they are supporting uh, wherever uh, they are seeing the imbalance. So they should definitely uh, intervene and make sure that, well, there are right policies in place, there are right cultures in place to really uh, bridge these gaps. Um, I also uh, support a lot of mentoring. Um, whether it is on platforms like um, Beyond Diversity, uh, BYST, um, then you know, very recently I also started mentoring some of the Gandhi Fellows, uh, which is essentially an initiative of Piramal Enterprises and uh, Kevalia Education Foundation. Um, they are also supporting a lot of very uh, lot of young uh, women uh, who want to do something for community. So there are a lot of ways in which one can support. But more than that, I believe that wherever we as men see any, um, um, any, any gap, we should just try to help and bridge this at any level, whether at corporate, whether at community, or whether even at the, uh, at the very home level, we should put in every effort to make sure that well, we, uh, we address the discrimination and uh, challenge the status quo, is what I would say. Excellent. So I like this thing about, you know, you're trying to bring in, of course, trying to bridge the imbalance when you see it, but you may not even see it if you are, if you have the bias yourself. So it starts with, you know, um, understanding your own bias, being aware of it, and then only you can start moving in that direction. Yeah. Any uh, other? Uh, very categorically, I said at home is because, um, you know, I may be trying to do a lot of those things, um, at community level, at corporate level, but well, what if at home, I still have that bias, oh, no, 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 you know what, uh, I don't want my daughter to do it, but I would like my son to, to, to get involved into a good this. So each one of us, first of all, need to address it at our own homes. Well, we are, you know, unbiased towards opportunities and, um, uh, you know, um, or, you know, uh, sort of, Everything that we do for our um, sons, we should make those opportunities available to our daughters as well. That's the very premise of this, uh, you know, addressing this imbalance. So this is where I very categorically said that it all starts at home. And if each one of us are doing that, then you know what? Much of effort would not be required outside of, um, um, of our homes because everybody is, is putting in the effort in that direction. Well said. So for all of us, it starts at home. Right. Be aware of the biases and everything. Excellent. Anything else you would like to share in terms of, let's say, what other corporates are doing, some of the initiatives that they're trying to, because you work across uh, organizations as well. Uh, so any pointers there in terms of uh, what corporates are trying to do to bridge this gap? Um, sure. So one, a lot of corporates are doing a lot of great stuff. Um, you know, I would, I would just highlight one thing. Um, most of the corporate corporates do very well uh, in the formative years to hire, groom, and grow women. But the problem starts once uh, women professionals have reached the mid level of their careers. So I think much of effort needs to be put in that space. That well, how do we make sure that well uh, they continue to be successful in their in their careers post that mid level? So. Um, Let's say women have taken a, a break to start the family or to you know help somebody in the family you know 
let's say kids with their exams or elderly with their health issues, etc. There should be opportunities for them to get back. And at Barclays, we're running a program called Encore, uh, which is essentially a way to really mentor women and help them get back uh, to full-time uh, working after they have taken a career break. Many organizations are running uh, these kind of programs, and I think uh, these are the ways where uh, we can really do our bit to help uh, bridge that gap in that space, and which I believe is a is a very very wide gap, which uh, which needs to be bridged. And I think a lot many organization uh, organizations need to um, come forward and help bridge this gap. Second, um, uh, I would say that well the large organizations, the likes of the Barclays and the Goldman's and the Deutsches of the world where I have worked, uh, they do a great job. We being uh, global organizations, we being very large organizations, we being very uh, progressive organizations, uh, you know, we have, sun, we, we have seen and we have done those things. But then uh, local organizations, the, the smaller organizations, uh, the mid-sized organization, I think they also need to assume this responsibility and they also need to put in their effort in really uh, bridging this gap. I believe that while well, more work needs to be done um, at that level and at those organizations, they are doing, but probably a more, a little bit more of that effort is required. There. Okay. Um, that was really, you know, refreshing and uh, a topic which is very important, but uh, you know, not much is being spoken about it, about men's involvement, and which is why I think your perspective was, uh, was very interesting and very useful. Any last words uh, before we conclude, Ashok? What is the one message you'd like to leave the audience with? Um, as I said uh, earlier as well, that I think um, this is not just women's responsibility. This is not just uh, corporate um, India's responsibility. I think this should become everybody's uh, responsibility. We all need to take our own uh, small steps. We all need to do our small bit to make sure that, well, together it becomes a giant leap, uh, which is going to help bridge the gap. And as I mentioned, well, uh, honestly, I would like to see this gap bridging in my own lifetime rather than be waiting for 257 years to see this gap bridging. So uh, I urge everybody, I urge all men to really do their bit and make sure that, well, um, they are helping bridge this gap. And as I said, it starts at home. So please make sure that the daughters are getting equal opportunities. And um, we are putting in every effort to pave the way for them to get out and have successful career. Have them do whatever they want to do. It's not always about getting into a job or getting into corporate. But you know, let them do what they want to do, like what we allow our sons, uh, the men, to do. The so same opportunity should be there for women as well. And we all need to support this uh, as individuals, uh, as community, as society. Excellent. So that's a very clear message. Uh, 257 years, we need to cut it down to you know maybe uh, a much smaller time frame. And we need to start at home, treat our daughters the same way we treat our sons. Very well said. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you, Ashok. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me once again and all the very best. Thank you.